Welcome back to Exquisitely Aligned, the podcast. I'm your host, Gina Vincent, and I'm so excited to have an amazing guest with me today. But first, before we get into that, I want to say with all my heart, Exquisitely Aligned is about you becoming your truest self so that you can go out in the world and be exactly what's missing. And that is our mission. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you someone who does exactly that. She is exquisitely aligned and she happens to be many things of which is an author. I don't know if this woman sleeps or eats, but she's an author, a radio show host, an angel card reader, a publisher, a certified life and relationship coach. She's the founder of Dare to Be Authentic. Now you know why I like her, right? I'm going to say that one more time. The founder of Dare to Be Authentic, which is exactly what I stand for as well. And the author of Diary of a Hopeless Romantic, which I think I kind of am, and The Cuban Love. Her passion is helping people connect with their authentic self to create a life of joy and fulfillment and bring their authentic talents into the world. And I am delighted to uh, introduce you here today to Miss Mari Mitchell, who is, I feel like a soul sister. And I was able to be a guest on her show where I learned very quickly, she's also one of my neighbors now that I'm here on the West Coast. So welcome, Mari. So happy to have you with me today. Thanks so much, Gina. It's totally my pleasure to be here. How wonderful for you to invite me. (laughs) So I wanted to discuss a couple of things that I think we could probably talk about for hours, but I know you have a life because you heard, we all heard the list of things that you get done in a week, a month, in a year. But I find that after 20 years of working with women, stretching their personal boundaries, and moving them like you to dare to be authentic, what I like to say is exquisitely aligned, right? The same concept is that few people are talking about this. And I know you're one that I can talk to about this for a long time. And in a way that we can enlighten and share other people about our journeys of where we came from and where we are today. And that is that I think when we think about living our finest life, our most fulfilling life, whether it be in our relationships or our career or our health and our personal selves, we think about going outside of ourselves for the answers. And I think that starts in kindergarten when you, well, I was taught to look in a book at the library, but nowadays my kids are taught to Google it, right? A word that I didn't even know existed back then. And um, at any rate, when we go outside of ourselves, I find certain things happen to us. So I'd love to discuss with you today a few of them, which is I think we um, find ourselves feeling unworthy I think we find ourselves feeling a bit unfulfilled. You were talking about joy earlier when I read about what you do here in this world, how you give back to uh, our community and the world over. And I think that we find ourselves comparing ourselves to others um, and that we might feel unhappy, unsatisfied, or unfulfilled. Those are the words I usually pick. But sometimes it can also lead to stress and so forth. Um, So with that, I wanted to ask you, where do you want to start, Mari? Because I'm going to leave it open to you because I know the journey for each of us is different. It may have started at birth when we were put in that crib, which is one of the first boxes we're put in. Um, And the other part I forgot to mention is roles and rules. I feel like depending on our where we are born um, in the world, uh, what nationality we come from, maybe even our faith um, and the beliefs of our family can play, put us into roles and rules. Yesterday we celebrated uh, International Women's Day. So uh, kudos to you for being a change maker out there. And um So roles and rules, maybe leaving our intuition or leaving our truest selves and unworthiness. I'd love to discuss all three in whichever way, shape, or form it takes for you, Mari. 
Okay, good. So roles and rules. I'm going to start there because that's how I was raised. I was raised with lots of rules. I'm from a Cuban background. I was actually born in Cuba and raised in New York. I was only a year old when I went to New York. But my parents raised us that Cuban way, you know, the only way. Everything was super, super strict. <laughs> and on top of that, I had a Roman Catholic um, mm -hmm. a church mm -hmm. where there was even more rules and where I think I learned my unworthiness, not that it was their intent, but a lot of my unworthiness, I found the source of it. It was being taught that I wasn't good enough, really. And so... Um, one of the things I discovered with the rules, of course, because I was raised with rules, I just wanted to be a good girl. I want to be that good Catholic girl, you know, uh, get my A's, everybody would praise me, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what happens to that? You become a people pleaser. You know that very well. <laughs> so now all you want to do is for people to like you and love you and be happy. And mm -hmm. you're trying to make people happy. And so you're agreeing to so many things not that they're bad things but no what movie do you want to go to where do you want to go for dinner what do you want to do for vacation and it all becomes a people pleasing thing and before yeah. you know it you know several years later you don't even know what you like what you want who you <laughs> are and that's what happens <laughs> it's so true i'm going to stop you there for a second because i think that there are other people nodding their head with us it's so true it happens so quickly, I think. I think it happens so easily, so almost naturally, wouldn't you say? It's not like uh, somebody said, hey, Mari, you need to please everybody around you. It's just that we right. realize we're getting this attention, this approval, this acknowledgement for the A, for being the quote unquote good girl, for um, making mommy and daddy proud, maybe grandma, grandpa, auntie, uncle. You, I, I'm also, well, I'm Catholic still to this day, raised Roman Catholic also. So maybe your godmother, godfather, th these people are like, wow, Mari, woo, way to go. You know, it, it's, um, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, because it's it's so true. It, and thank you for speaking so transparently from your heart about this, because a lot of people uh, shy away from that, Mari. Well, if you're going to be authentic, and I decided that a long time ago, and of course, I don't want to have anybody think that, okay, I began this journey and now I'm authentic and I'm done. No, <laughs> it is a continual journey. It is, you have to work. I've come a long way, but I have not arrived. And I don't think any of us arrived. We just continue our path and learn more and more and more. But what I realized um, years back was that, and it happened to me more in relationship with men. Mm -hmm. So after um, I was divorced, I was married, I was divorced, and then I started dating. And I didn't even know I had this pattern, but I had this pattern of becoming whoever the guy I was dating, who I thought the guy I was dating wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And he didn't even know who he wanted me to be, who I thought, because this was all in my head, right? <laughs> and so, and so um, and that doesn't lead to very good relationships because no. now I am being who I really am. This man is interacting with a woman that he thinks is one person, but that's not my person. Eventually, the real person comes out, and they're like, who am I dating, right? And I was like, what am I doing wrong? So that was a revelation for me. A lot of, a lot of self-help books, a lot of you know, reading about coaches, from coaches. In fact, that's how I entered coaching, because I actually coached myself uh, through the beginning of it, just finding out what am I doing wrong, because I do keep having the same experience with different men same experience same experience so obviously <laughs> what's the common de denominator me obviously i'm doing something well and kudos so, to you for figuring that out because sometimes people think it's the other person right yeah. so you yeah. had the awareness which is the first step in transformation is to say okay well this guy had a different name different culture di look different and now this is guy three and the same thing is happening Sometimes people go away and say, oh, men, are, they're all the same. Yeah, absolutely right. I'm glad you brought that up. And none of them obviously was suited for me. 
but that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It, it, what matters is me. And I thought one day I thought, you know, I am tired of being unhappy. I am tired of crying. I'm tired of living this life. I have wonderful children. I have a great job. I have so many good things. I don't have a, re- a romantic relationship right now that's working, but I have all these other things. So I yeah. just began working on me, you know, and that's really what my first book, Diary of a Hopeless Romantic is about. It's about a, a woman going through internet dating, meeting all these guys, uh, not do, being very successful at it, but <laughs> evolving, evolving for herself, <laughs> becoming who she needs to be so that then she can draw the man that really is the one for her. So rules and um rules are important you know we need to have some order in our life (laughs) but when you become so rigid and i was that way my poor son and my daughters when they were really really young and i didn't know that you know i had so many rules and i was so rigid about everything only because i wanted them to be doing well and i wanted my house to look great and i just it was all for good (laughs) it took me so after I went and I started to to self evolve, I thought, "Wow, these rules are really hindering me," you mm-hmm. know. And so I began to look at them carefully. I'm not saying we don't ever need rules. Right. Some of us more than others. We need guidelines, but we are grown ups now. We can make our own rules. That was such a revelation for me. And 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 what a uh, phenomenal one to come to at a young age, right? Because sometimes people leave this magical world without ever coming to that revelation of, I am an adult. Yes. I, I, there, like I said to my kids, uh, one time they were in the back seat and I forgot what they were annoyed that I wasn't the, you know, going to win the mother of the year award given by them. And I said to them, I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm here to make you a good citizen, somebody who goes out and gives back to the world. And I, and I was approaching a stop sign and I said, what would happen if I go right through this stop sign? They're like, no, 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 don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, well, what would happen? And they said, we could be in an accident. We could get a ticket. I said, okay, keep going. Like, give me the list. So I said, yeah, I have some rules like you as a mom, right? Especially when those kids are young, the rules are more like uh, to keep them safe, maintain order and sanity for mom. I don't know about you, but I definitely needed rules to keep my own sanity. You see, my hair is short. It wasn't long enough for me to pull, you know? but yes, it's, it's, it's brilliant that you had that wherewithal, that awareness and the ability to, to aware, but then the ability to say, Hey, I, I'm at a place in my life where I can make my own rules or tweak them or whatever the word is for you. That's awesome. Yes. Mari. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and know what's, what, what serves me, what rules yes. serve me or what guideline and what don't and that took me a long time to be able to be aware of how i was feeling that was my biggest challenge as i began this journey Mm -hmm. because i didn't give myself time to feel what i felt i don't know if you had that experience i just knew i wasn't happy or frustrated or whatever sometimes not even why Mm -hmm. so i would have to say and say, okay, so why am I feeling angry? Or why am I sad? What is this about? And sometimes it would take me days initially to get down to the bottom of it because I wasn't in my emotions. Because yes. what? Women are emotional. You have to stop crying, et cetera, et cetera, right? What I learned is our emotions are there as a guide to help us. They yeah, tell absolutely. us when something is great yes. and going having a ball and they tell us when something is not quite right and they tell us when something is like danger stop right yes now. yes and if if i can interject there for a moment so for me i always knew how i felt i really never um my journey was just a little bit different uh, i'm pretty mm-hmm. headstrong very feisty uh always been this way um, I think that's why my hair stands up on my head. 
you know, I always challenged my parents. I probably am solely out of the three kids responsible for the gray hairs that my parents both have. Um, I, my sister and brother, maybe one or two hairs, but the rest of the head was me. And I did, I followed the rules like you, Mari. I was, I mean, I am the oldest. I was the straight A student. I, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I very quickly knew, uh, I would say, from my intuition and my gut, and my gut is my guide. Not everybody is, is, the messages come through the stomach. But for me, it's the stomach of like a knot or like a happy stomach, a big smiling stomach, you know, almost like a Buddha belly, you know, I call it. But, um, you know, I... Uh, realized when Mark was ill, I'm not going to tell that whole long story, you know it, listeners know it, but that, uh, you know, I was steered off my path temporarily to advocate for him and his health and the future that I saw for, for he and I, and for him being the dad to our children. But um, I think that I, when I was teaching yoga uh, some 20 years ago, when I started, I realized very quickly that as I had these beautiful souls on their yoga mat, that there were things that ended up from their emotions that ended up in their body showing up mm -hmm. in different poses, whether it be a balance pose, the mind talking, and they couldn't quite balance. And I also started noticing some patterns. You mentioned the word um, not having enough time, I think you said, to like know how you feel. I, I, I saw a lot of women, I think as a coping skill, being the, the busiest mother out there. And I'm not saying this was you, but it could be somebody who has their kid in every single sport, every single um, activity, every birthday party, every, you know, and, and, and it's, it's almost like, um, uh, uh, I was thinking of a glass of wine, like subduing the emotion. You know what I mean? Like if I'm busy enough, I don't have to feel, un I, I won't realize I'm unhappy. Or if I'm, right. if I'm involved enough in the PTA and the, the whatever charity, um, I won't have that time to realize that I'm standing in the shower and I have tears in my eyes. Or, you know, I'm pretending to wipe my makeup, but really my eyes are tearing because I'm, I am sad. I am the girl that's going to cry. You know what I mean? And I'm not maybe a girl anymore. I'm a full grown woman, but I've, I've, I'm giving up pieces of myself to make everyone, I'm eating Indian food, even when I wanted Thai food, right? I'm being silly, but you were talking about picking restaurants. It is so yes. true. And I think as a woman, this has been going on, in my opinion, when I look, because I started researching this for an episode that I filmed um, last year about worthiness, because for me, it's number three out of five for the tips to uh, live our finest future. And it's, we are worthy and we are worthy. If you desire more, it's because you're supposed to have more, you deserve more. Um, and I went back and I started like researching and this is centuries old. It's not something new. And you mentioned being Cuban. I'm Italian and German. And it, it, it's it's not for only Cuban people. Yesterday, I was with a woman in India, not with her, with her <laughs> on an episode. And um, it, it's the same there, you know, and it's just something that we could probably trace back, I don't know, to the beginning of men and women. Um, and so I love the fact that you, you know, found your way. Now you share it with others. You guide them through that transformation because it's not easy. I mean, so I want to ask you about naysayers. Uh, sometimes it could be someone from our family going, well, Mari, who do you think you are to <laughs> deserve whatever, whatever it is? Yeah, and then the other right. naysayer could be ourselves getting in the way saying, who do I, who, who do I think I am to have a, a live radio show, right? You know what I mean? Like, I, yes. so how, what would you, or what are your feelings or what do you want to add to that? Cause I, I'm, 
you're nodding your head and I know we could, we have a lot to uh, talk about. I want to give you the mic. As, as far as worthiness, you know, that was something that was actually revealed to me. I went to a women's conference um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and um, it was about, it was mostly about business, you know, mm. uh, a woman in business and different business skills for coaches. But the very last day of the conference, there was, she always gave us homework to do, you know, exercises to do. And I remember sitting in the coffee shop of the hotel, this beautiful hotel, and there was a coffee shop and I ordered a coffee and I sat there because she said, and me, I still, you know, she said, make sure you do this before you leave the hotel. So that part of me, you know, it's like, okay, she said to do it before, so I'm going to do it before. But it makes sense because then you get back to your life and you don't even finish it. And so... Gina, it was the most amazing thing. I'm sitting there in the coffee shop and I'm doing the exercise and I can't even remember what it was. But And they were playing 70s music, which is my favorite, 70s, 80s. And as I was writing the exercise, I had a revelation of my worthiness. I had the revelation that God made me as I am and he believes in me and what I was put here to do. He does. I couldn't even believe it. It was like, I didn't see, you know, there was no lightning, but it felt like a light. It felt like this. Well, it's bringing really? tears. It's bringing tears to my eyes because that is that. It, it, so just say that one more time and just eat a little slower because I want those listening to hear that one more time, because this message is something that Mari heard for herself, but I'm getting because it's making me tear up that other people listening need to hear it from your voice. It was, okay. you just said it so beautifully. Okay. So I had a revelation that God made me as I am put me on this earth for a purpose and he fully believes in me. It was such a flip because I always believed in him. He believed right. in me. Right. He knew my giftings because he gave them to me. Yes. And he gave them to me for a purpose and I was to get up and go, you know, fulfill my purpose. And, and it's, so, it, 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 and yes, 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 yes. Kudos. I'm clapping. I'm jumping. I have goosebumps. Yes. Yes. I love it. And I'm so glad you followed the rule that day because you had the option, right? We live in a free will world where you could have said, I'll do this when I get home. And then it gets mm -hmm. put in the bottom for me. It might be in the bottom of my closet or my desk drawer, right? right? And you, you followed that rule and we have to make decisions. Is this rule right for me? And it was right for you because you were still in this amazing place. What I picture is you still glowing inside from being surrounded and motivated by other business. Uh, I'm guessing they were female or were they? Women, women? all women, all business women. All women, coaches. So yeah. you were in this divine feminine energy and you, yeah. you, yeah, it wasn't lightning, but it was, and that's something I feel like sometimes that part of our faith or spiritual walk is not spoken about, you right. know, that right. yes, right. You were saying, okay, I'm passionate about my creator and God and this, and, but Yes, you were given these gifts only you. I tell my kids all the time, you're as unique as that fingerprint. Nobody, nobody in this world will ever have that fingerprint or has had, will have, has currently. That is you and you are here to leave that fingerprint in a in a positive, um, hopefully life-lasting, like a legacy, like you are, the work you're doing, of course, of course, my kids are 16 and 20, so they think I'm nuts. But I know, I know that you know they hear me because I see the choices that they're beginning to make, and um, that is so so important, Mari. So beautifully stated, so empowering 
So um, see, that to me is our power. And I think of power as a feminine thing. I think of it as, I call it beautiful. And I desire beautiful things. I know sometimes that kind of irked my mother, like, oh, why does she like these things? But I, I feel like God made beautiful things, flowers and trees. And for me, the sunshine, I just went outside. I, uh, my husband said, I said to him, I'm, I'm, I've got a pain in my neck. I'm getting my shoulder replaced in three weeks from today. And I said, the inflammation's going up my neck and I'm excited to meet Maury, but I'm, I'm getting this neck. He said, go sit outside. So I did. And I just sat in the sun and looked at the trees and started realizing, oh, my flowers are starting with all the rain we've had. Like, you know, yeah. I think it's beautiful to stand in that power and have that revelation and carry that with you every day, everywhere you go, share it like you just did, give it a voice. Um, so uh, for that, I commend you and thank you. And so how did that like play out like on your flight or your drive home and then and, and every day after? Well, after that, I flew to California because my daughter had just moved here, I don't know, three, four months before, spent Thanksgiving with her, mm -hmm. and which was wonderful. Then I went home back to Florida. I lived in Florida at the time. And this beautiful course is what came out of it. I call it the majesty in you Ooh, because I had a revelation of God's magnificence in me. And the biggest revelation or the most important thing for me is that the naysayers, right? There's going to be naysayers. There's going to be people who don't believe in you, who don't encourage you, who don't like you, etc. cetera. But it doesn't matter because God, creator, universe is on our side. Yes. So, so what difference does it make if there's 50 people, 100 people, 1,000 people who don't receive our message or even put us down and, and try to drag us down? It doesn't matter. We are here to serve a purpose and the power of the entire universe is inside of us. Yes. You know, when we and, allow it to come to us. Yes. And with your radio show and with your books and your publishing company and your coaching, it's what I try to remind my kids is sure. If there's 50 or hundred people who don't want to hear our message or choose not to, or maybe now is not the time for them. They're not, they yeah. haven't had that awakening, that realization we just spoke about a few minutes ago. And that happens too. But yeah. think about how many people are in the world, how many people are alive right now. And it, it's so it, it, you have to, I always say it's my dad says it's all relative, right? And I always say to my kids, quantify like 50% of what? 50% of, <laughs> of, this glass or 50% of the people in your high school, 50% of the kids in your grade, 50% right. of what, what are we talking about? Because 50% could be a big thing or it could be a really little thing. So if it's a hundred or 50 people, that's a really small thing when we think about how many people are in the world. Right. And, and so I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you brought that up, but that is, so did your family immediately see a, like, I want to say, cause you glow. Um, I see your glow it, it, living <laughs> as your authentic self and, and being that dare, dare, um, having that daring side of you, but did your kids immediately feel and see a difference in you, that lightness? I'm not sure, but I ended up moving to California <laughs> shortly after because that was November and I moved the following June. I was in California. I just felt yeah. there was, there's, it's so different here. I call it the vibration. It is. And it's so, it has so much energy and it's so youthful. And, yes. um, and so that's what happened. I created the course. I moved to California, you know, continued my coaching business here, et cetera, et cetera. I'd already been doing my radio show. And I just, for, for probably the first time in my life, I just felt fully free to do the life I wanted to do for me. And I... 
for those of you who are not on YouTube, I'm, I'm raising my hands and getting excited because there's that word again. It it's, keeps coming up. I just wrote a blog and freedom came up yesterday in a conversation. Freedom came up and feeling free. And for me, that's like being able to soar or fly. What, how would you describe it or how does it feel or what does that look like for you? For me, it looked like, and it, it's evolved. It looked like it didn't matter yeah. if other people didn't support me, you right. know, emotionally support me, whether it be financially. Mm -hmm. It didn't really matter because I knew what I wanted to do. I knew the path that I was taking. And God knew because he sent me there. <laughs> and for once, I didn't have to worry about what other people think. You know, I was raised with what will people think? What will people right. think about you? if you do this, if you do that, if you, you know, so, you know, all that old stuff. And, um, and I'm like, I don't know what they'll think, but I'm not doing anything wrong. So <laughs> why do they even have to think about it? And do those really, do those people really matter? Right? Because exactly. like, do you think that they're living authentically? Because if they're not living authentically, then really, do you really care about what they think? Because they're not, <laughs> they're not being true to themselves. They're not um, breaking out of that one size fits all, you know, uniform, so mm -hmm. forth. So it doesn't always matter. I learned through yoga, uh, oh, I did want to say that. So earlier you had mentioned about, um, what did I write? Uh, we're always, we're constantly uh, on this journey of transformation. We're constantly learning. And I agree with you 100%. One thing I read in a yoga book, which I absolutely love, this was about 20, 21 years ago, is that a yogi said, if you're not learning, then you die. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, I mean, he had it a little more eloquent, but right, that was the gist of it. That's the message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The message was very clear. And he was in his, I think, 90s when he was saying that. And it's like, wow. yeah, then there's no reason to be alive if we're not evolving and transforming. I don't know that we have to grow anymore, you know. Uh, I don't want to grow this way anymore. That's for sure. Right. And I know I'm, I'm done growing tall. So um, I think that it's, it's about transforming, transcending, stretching, uh, you know, a million words could come into whatever suits you at that time. But um, the other thing, what was I going to say about yoga that we just finished was um a, a mindset thing. What did you just say be, prior that before I inter interrupted you? Now I got to think. Mm, I really don't remember. Oh, you were asking me about um, how other people took, you know, the changes that I have. Yeah. I do remember, I was wondering while you were talking that my sister told me, and she's in Miami, she lives in Miami, and I was already in California. She goes, you're the most authentic person I know. <laughs> And I was like, that's the highest compliment anybody could ever give me. I right. don't even know what I was talking about, but, you know, I'm just, I've learned to be me. And I do have to take it down a notch. I do grow up in New York. You know how we are as New Yorkers. I Not know. with me, my friend. Not with me. Hello, New Yorker. But sometimes I, I can be a little rough and my daughter's like, mom, I'm like, well, I'm not being mean. I'm just being <laughs> honest, but not. Not so honest as saying, well, I really hate your hair. You know, that's too rude. Right. But, but I just, and, and you know what's amazing, uh, Gina? As I began this journey, my girls were teenagers, mm -hmm. young teenagers, and they have become such beautiful, authentic women, especially my oldest one. And she cannot even tolerate when people are inauthentic. She goes, at work, I just don't understand it, Mom. They're so inauthentic. I said, honey, <laughs> you are rare. You're a rare beauty. You don't understand that this is a gem and yeah. not everybody, you know, has been able to, to, to evolve into that gem. So. They weren't supported by a mom who understood it and did it for herself. Right. I mean, right. Exactly. it, 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 
it happens. And I think depending on where we live, um, you know, gr growing up in New York with a dad who was an immigrant, is an immigrant, right, from Germany. My mom is, how would you say, my grandfather was an immigrant. My grandmother okay. was second generation, so Italian on that side, German. And every house on the block was a different nationality. I loved it, right? But every one of those houses had rules about what, yeah. what being a girl of a certain age or being a wife or being a mother or being a husband, I mean, what we're talking about now is from a woman's standpoint, but I was thinking about it as I went to bed last night too. You had used the words about, you know, uh, being that girl crying or emotional woman. And it's sad because men are told they shouldn't be emotional, but they should feel. It, we, you, yeah. you said earlier, our feelings are like our compass. It guides us through. This is safe. This is unsafe. This is a good decision. I should work here. And, and I think that depending on where we are, what field we work in, I came from the fashion industry. So that could at times a little bit plasticky, inauthentic, again, showy yeah. maybe. Um, you know, I had somebody recently, I was in, at an event as a vendor and she said something to me like, well, what does your false lashes and your lipstick mean or mean about you? And I was like, it means I like glamour. I like dolling up. I like dressing up. I like, to, you know, I'd much rather do that than walk around like the kids at my daughter's high school that are in their pajamas and their slippers, you know? I mean, I realize that's comfortable, but for me, I don't feel comfortable in that especially in public. I, yeah. you know, I had a fight with my mom when I was apparently three years old that the pajamas she laid out for me that I was to put on were ugly. And she told me, nobody's going to see them. I said, I'm going to see them. I am yeah. not wearing those. And she just knew that this was going to be a child, you know, that was wow. uh, so cute. <laughs> Well, I don't think she thought it was cute at the time, but I'm um, sure she did. But you were you were born a glamour girl. I love that. That is so cute. Aww. You know, they were probably flame retardant, but you know those they were. I know, but you knew they were ugly. You're like, no, I'm not ready. And I knew they weren't my personality. You know, right. like they didn't represent me. And when I sleep, I want to dream about beautiful things, and these pajamas were gonna restrict that. So I know what I was gonna say before was. Um, for me, uh, practicing yoga and then being an instructor, instructor, a registered yoga instructor, I learned when to speak and when to not waste the energy, the time, the voice, you know, in when you were talking about the naysayers and, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes or many times being the feisty person that I am, the New York Italian in me would get up, you know, want to get up and it, I want to say into someone's face, but not in, in that, but you know, like, well, this is why I believe this. And this is why I stand for this and this, but then I realized, you know, this is something powerful in when I was teaching it that I don't have to go there. I don't have yeah. to give that person my time my energy, they're probably not going to change their point of view because they're so rigid or stuck in those rules and roles and those beliefs. So why even get my uh, heart racing in a bat? It's one thing for your heart to be racing with joy and fulfillment, but it's another for it to be like trying to move a mountain, right? And so I'm glad you talked about that earlier because that for me was a real... Um, powerful moment. Have you ever experienced anything in that way? I have also learned that lesson. I was very vocal when I was young. You know, I grew up in New York like you did. You know, uh, love to share my opinion. New Yorkers are opinionated. It's just how we are. And I would share it with everybody all the time. And then as I became older, I realized that, and, and I was, it wasn't like when I turned 20, it took me well into my forties to realize this, that. But you're only 39. Yeah. Well, oh yeah. So it took me to my thirties. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Now you have to cover it all up. 
So <laughs> it took me into my 40s to realize that it didn't matter how many times I told someone that if they changed their diet and if they moved more, they would feel better or if they meditated or, you know, they are worthy, the divine loves them. It didn't matter. You said it before. They're not ready to hear the message. Maybe they will never be ready. Maybe they'll be ready next week or next year. Or, or maybe they need to pay you. And then they realize, have you ever seen that happen? I always tell my husband, I should charge you a copay because I'm giving you great advice for free. And because it's free, you don't really listen to me. But if I charged you and sent you a little invoice for this advice, you'd probably take it. <laughs> right? So I love that. That is so cute. I actually have, have, you, I have you seen that happen, but I did have a client who paid me. Mm -hmm. And I was coaching, 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 doing sessions. She never did her homework. I call it homework. Mm. And then um, we didn't do any coaching anymore. She was done. And then like two years later, I was already in California. All the things I told her all of a sudden clicked in her head. Yes. It was, and she just completely changed her life. And I was thought I was, this was my failure. I failed this client. No, all that she, I said was going in there, was going in her heart, but she wasn't ready to accept it or to make changes or whatever it was. So as far as speaking up now, I used to be the person that if I came into the room and they were holding bingo night, I would tell them how to set up the table. Let's move this here. Let's do this, that, the other. You don't want to be like that. I used to be the person who also volunteered to do everything for everyone. Now I go to bunko groups with my friends. I go to lawn bowling and I let everybody else figure it out. And if they're having a problem, magically, I don't have to jump in and fix the problem. It's miraculous. And I don't even know how much I had changed until one day I went to a girlfriend's house and they were having a movie afternoon and they just couldn't get the thing to connect. And I was this close. I was this close. And I said, none of my business. Let them. And it turned out they couldn't get it online. And she took a movie out of her drawer and she popped it in and we had the best time. Yeah. And you know what, Gina? I really have learned how to zip my mouth. And I do not carry on like I used to do with mm -hmm. people that are not ready to hear a message or mm -hmm. aren't even asking me. Sometimes mm -hmm. they weren't even asking me. I was just offering, right? Because I see that. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. I think there is, was there more? Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> I get very excited when I'm talking with you, Mark. Um, I think that I know for myself and I see it with clients that there is this shift that, or at least I like to uh, ask clients to see the shift that some of us were born very, we're all born unique, what I call exquisite. I think you agree, authentic, right? Absolutely. doesn't matter the word, we, we're in agreement. And that um, some of us knew from a young age we're here to help and assist and shift and and move shit, I'm going to say. Uh, I'm an activator. That's my number one gift. I get shit done. It used to drive my mother crazy. And even one day my daughter said, why are you mopping like that? I said, because honey, I got shit done. I have other things I want to do. She's like, you're going so fast. I said, well, I'm going fast, but I can see I'm picking up the, you know, the dog, the dog footprints and, and stuff. I know how to do this. I used to have X amount of time while you were napping that I would get all this vacuum and mop done. And so um, I think there are some of us like you who I see as a, a change maker, a shifter, a you know, there's probably some sexier words, uh, but they're not coming to my mind, Mari. So you could tell me what they are after and I'll write them down. <laughs> but um, that we knew we were here for, for this calling that is 
huge and we wanted to get stuff moving. Therefore, we were giving advice for free, like I gave for my husband for years. I still give him advice, but I, I try to zip it very quickly when I realize what I'm doing. Um, it, and uh, I think now it's time that we step back and the help is in a different way. The help is like your books. The help is you helping people publish their, their stories, their um, teachings, their life's callings, their legacy and your show and things like that. And working one-on-one -on -one in groups and all the things you do that um, we realize we should be paid for those things because I feel like there's an energetic exchange when I pay top dollar, because I like nice things, I told you that already. So I like one-on-one -on -one work and I chose my in my own business not to offer groups anymore because I don't really like that. I like to get things done one-on-one. -on -one, I feel like I can move faster like New York speed, where with a group you're coddling, not coddling, but you're trying to keep everybody, come on, we all need to be, stay together. And if someone's not doing that homework, like the client you were just saying, it wasn't her time. She took it all in. She absorbed right. everything you said, but there was maybe a bit of unworthiness. Who knows? Maybe there just needed to be some big event in her life that went okay, I'm awake. I get it now. I hear Mari's voice in my head and I'm listening. I'm actually doing what she said. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's more rewarding for us, you and I, and, and all of each of us women who were, who know, or who felt for a long time that we're here for a purpose greater than being the mom, the wife, the girlfriend, the best friend, the daughter, the caregiver, whatever, whatever that is, you know, we can, we wear many, many hats, right? I only read a few of the ones of your hats, but I know there's more to you. And um, it's really important that we recognize that that great information that you had to give them if it was falling on deaf ears, it's exhausting for you, right? You said yeah. you felt like you may have failed her. Meanwhile, right. you gave her everything and then some, because I know you have a big heart um, and I know you care. And I know that you have great tools to help people shift or transcend or transform. And there's nothing worse in my opinion. I don't know how you feel, or how you would describe it, then going home for me feeling depleted. Like I had mm. something great to share. That diet, this ba da 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 da, like you're talking about, if you stop eating this and shift to that and move more, you'll feel better. That's right. like you're you're not asking them to go skydiving. You're not asking them to donate blood every three hours. You're 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 offering sane advice that's something easy and something they could start t today, this afternoon, right. right? The next meal, we get three choices a day if you eat three meals or if you eat five small meals or whatever you like. We get to vote on what we're going to put in our body and how we feel after we eat it. Um, yes. So, yeah, uh, I love that. What would you like to say, Mari? Um, let me think. I don't even know uh, what, was, what else was going through my head. Everything. <laughs> I'm excited too. I'm talking to you and all these thoughts are going. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening here? <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the most important thing for me is to be who you are. Back to authenticity. There's nothing, nothing sadder than to have, a li to have to live a life as an imposter. <laughs> yes. You know? and, and you can't really, you know, like you can't speak up about what you believe, mm -hmm. whatever it be. You, right. can't, um, you can't have the space, your space the way you want it to be or, mm -hmm. or whatever. You can't dress the way you want to dress right. because somebody else is dictating that to you. Not because you're a child, like we were talking about with the pajamas, but because you are, you know, because you have given them that instead of going, this is for me. Right. So I truly encourage people to 
to take the time because it took time for me to reconnect with myself. I did it in a couple of ways. I had read something. I don't even know what book or I would give her credit. I know it was a woman author. And she said, if you want to connect back with your authentic self, think about yourself as a teenager, as a teenager. Yes. What did you like to do? Mm-hmm. And what did you aspire to? Mm-hmm. So I love reading. Always. Yes. I would spend the summers on my bed reading. And so I realized at that point in my life, I was reading self-help books and religious books. That was it. So I said, I'm going to go back to reading novels for fun. And I did. Wow, it's fun. Then the second thing I did, uh, thought about was I always wanted to write. I always wanted to be a writer because I loved English and books and sentences and paragraphs. And so I joined a writer's group and just sat there for, for weeks at a time. Then this little phrase came in my mind. I started writing and I had no idea the joy that writing brings to me. Mm. And so those were the things I did for myself that led me back to me. And it's, it all started there. So, you know, find what it is. What what don't you do anymore that you absolutely love? You know, I mean, we all have things we love, whether it's walking in a garden or going sledding. It doesn't matter what it is, right? And so um, do those things and begin to discover you again. Yeah, I love that. I I often tell clients to think back a little bit younger because I've had some that already in as a teen they disconnected, but I, I agree with you. Teenage years also. Um and I think one thing that just popped in my head, so I'm gonna give a voice to it, is that sometimes we think there's we don't have enough time, right? right. But I always say, so I'm gonna use my husband again. He's a good scapegoat. I find him, we both work from home. I have the first floor office. He has the upstairs office. And I find him often in the kitchen washing some of the dishes, which is lovely. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I appreciate it. I'm grateful for that. But then I see him get like, I don't know. I can't talk to you about that right now. And I'm like, okay, Mark. So our daughter, who's 16, one of the things we ask her to do is wash the dishes. Why can't you leave your coffee pot in the sink till she's washing the dinner dishes? It's a coffee pot. It's not, you know, <laughs> he's the only coffee drinker in the house. It's not tremendous. The sink is deep. You can't see it, you know? Like, give yourself those few minutes because that's one of the things she's responsible for is cleaning up the 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 um, things that don't go in the dishwasher. Right. And I think sometimes we think we have to do everything as women um, and really think about maybe we hire somebody. Maybe there is a kid down the block who could, I don't know, if you have young kids, babysit like my daughter does. And, you know, it's, she gets paid well, but it's, it's worth, right? It's worth the exchange again. Where can I hire somebody to do something or ask my daughter, my son, or my husband, right? It, when clearly when he moves out, I will be very happy that Mark washes his coffee pot. But right now, if he's overwhelmed and stressed and he's not getting to the gym, I say, free yourself up. You, that's how many times that I see you in the sink for five, 10 minutes. That could be you standing in the yard, getting some sunshine or doing some t- Tai Chi or whatever it is. So I really believe in what you're saying and, and reading novels and writing. Now, writing is not one of the things, Mari, that I um, could say I really enjoy. I've gotten better at it over the years, but it's, it's doesn't come. It's not one of my gifts. <laughs> I much rather speak. Um, I find it easier getting the thoughts from here to the paper. I don't know. Maybe it's the shoulder that I'm. Maybe with my new shoulder that I'm getting in it'll three flow. weeks, it'll, it'll yes. flow properly. Because <laughs> right now it's 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 there's a disconnect. You know, I could blame it on the inflammation and the lack of bone that's there. But um, it that is such a key. Uh, key, key, key point 
returning and bringing back the joy and the fulfillment that we that we've kind of taken away. We don't have to. And I oftentimes say, do you have to be in X amount of clubs? Does your child have to be in X amount of sports? I mean, are they right. going to be the next, uh, I don't even know a famous football player, but are they going to be the next somebody who, you know, we would see on television who clearly I don't watch sports, but you know, uh, like my daughter wanted to go to, um, she was very nicely invited to a higher a tech dance class, a technical class, which is a, a an honor. But it's one hour on a Monday. She dances on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and she doesn't drive yet. So I said to her, I understand it's only a one hour class. It's not going to cost us any more because you take so many classes already. They're gifting it to you. You know, it's included. But it's me driving there, sitting in the car because I don't want to drive. By the time I get home, I have about 15 minutes before I have to get back in the car and drive to pick her up. And I said, you have to understand, sometimes I have to say no because right. I need to protect my energy. And I think clearly she's not happy with me and gave me the grumpy face the other day. And that lasted for a couple of hours. But she understands, you know right? Hormones play into it. Disappointment plays into it. But in the end, she understands. And soon enough, she'll be yeah. driving. But there are times where we have to, I don't know if you want to use the word, put our foot down or make the hard choice to not be the pleaser saying, sure, I'll jump in the car and drive you there. Yes. And I'll sit there in the cold or the rain or the dark and wait for you to come out, you know? Um but protecting that energy is so, just so important. So I love that. The fact that you bring that up. I love that. You know, when my kids were young, uh, as I began to learn things, one thing that I that we did as a family is you're talking about for the birthday parties. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes there'd be like three events in one day. There'd mm -hmm. be a church function, there'd be a birthday party, and then there'd be whatever. And I got down to the point that it was two kids at two different birthday parties. I'm not going to make them miss out, but if it was, you know, the father could take them to one, but it was like, we cannot do all this in one day. You know, it's, I'm exhausted. And so we're going to choose which one of these we want to attend, which would be right. more fun. And the kids, like you said, they grumbled a little bit, but then they got used to it. And, you know, yeah. it's not for them to, to run from thing to thing to thing to thing and be exhausted and get home and eat late and all that other stuff. So I, exactly. call, it I call it setting boundaries and yes. uh, and not wanting to, even, I even do it for myself now. I know what I would want to complete in each day. And some days I have more business tasks to do and some I don't, which I could do mm -hmm. other tasks. I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't do five radio shows a week. I can, but I don't. I limit it mm -hmm. to three. And most weeks it's two because that's a really mm -hmm. nice place for me. Because one thing I've learned yeah. as I got older is to get into that, um, that flow. A nice yeah. flow. So you don't feel like you wake up and you're running all day long and then mm -hmm. you land very exhausted. You know, I mean, right. all of it is and all of it is great but what really matters for me today you know? yeah and, what and I know you <laughs> yeah I know you use the word joy and fulfillment and I think that flow brings all of that like you go to bed feeling fulfilled and satisfied not depleted that you exactly. still have a, a list you know three miles long of things that you need to do because you didn't have the boundaries and I, I think you you hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, the kids appreciate it too. They grumble, they moan. Uh, my daughter can do the the neck thing and the eye roll thing. You know, I, I haven't mastered that yet. I'm not sure I ever will. Um, I'm not sure I want to, but anyway, but you know, with that short lived and we, as parents, or aunts or uncles or however we touch other people's lives, even as sisters, right? We want to 
lead by example, instead of being the nice girl, I, I like to refer to her as Nora, who's always being nice and people pleasing and such and so forth, doesn't have the boundaries, can't say no, feels maybe a little unworthy, so forth, if we're going to an extreme, right? Um, but if we can teach our children these boundaries early enough, like, hey, mom and dad, we're busy too, and you, you don't have a car, you don't have a license, and so therefore you're not going to be dancing. At some point you can. Mm -hmm. On the days that it works, we'll make it happen, but I can't, I can't do this for you every, every Monday. You know, right. and I agree with you. I'm laughing about the birthday parties because I was that child, Mari, who begged my mother to drive me across town because I'm, but I'm best friends with Mari and I'm best friends with the, you know, like my mother would be like, no, are you one of <laughs> children? And no, we are not. Daddy's not driving one direction and I'm driving the other. Like, no, the world doesn't revolve around Gina. So I, I was that child who was probably, maybe back then I could roll my eyes and do the neck bob thing. But yeah, so that was funny. You brought up the birthday party because I do remember one time specifically, I think I was a sixth grader and it just didn't happen. I only got to one of them. And I thought from now on, these people need to like, make sure they, that they all don't happen on the same day. <laughs> but that happens as, as adults, that happens to us. And maybe the holidays and we would get invited to two, three, I'm not going to go to three holiday parties on a Saturday. I'm just not right. going to do it. I'll pick the one that feels the best to me and enjoy yeah. that one fully. Right. Know? Exactly. And then you could always visit with the other people at, in a different way, shape and form, whether it be go out for a glass of wine, have them over for dinner or go for a walk. You know, I mean, there there are other ways to be able to catch up and enjoy um, their company. Well, Mari, I know that I can totally move into your house and chew your ear off <laughs> because I really enjoy you and and your ability to be as transparent and authentic and and to be the, one of those change makers out there making the world a better place by using your voice and your writing and um and your coaching but i know that i do have to let you go to do some other fabulous things that are on your uh, your um calendar but i would like to pick a card if you're okay and oh, then yes. I'll, I'll read it to you so these are from the opening to possibilities uh deck one what i usually do is just ask you to, to tell me when to stop so give me a half a second to shuffle as you can tell i'm not really uh i would never get a job in vegas doing cards because <laughs> Not one of my, definitely not one of my gifts, but um, so we'll just shuffle them as good as I can. And then you just tell me when to stop and I'll pull okay. whatever. Okay. Stop. Okay. Oh, of course you got this one. <laughs> Let's see if I can put it. Can you see that? It says Whoa. love. Oh love. my gosh. Oh, so, how beautiful. Of course. Of course, this is what you got. Love is a dynamic essence. So there's three questions you could pick. You could answer all of them or choose one. What is your definition of love? How do you give or show love? And describe how you receive love. What was the first question? First one, what is, what is your definition of love? Um, love is hard to define because it's such a feeling. I'll go with how I give love. Yeah. So it's it's with attention, and you know, people have their different love languages. That's yes. How do you receive love? Some people want to get presents. Some people want to spend time with you. Some people like acts of kindness. They want you to serve them coffee and whatever. But for me, loving means giving attention to someone, and. It doesn't necessarily have to be friends. For example, you and I don't speak a lot. You know, we, right. we have our own careers. We're very busy, but I'm always sending you love. You can yeah. send to love to someone 
when you're in your quiet time in the morning, when you're praying, whatever you call it, but putting your attention on that person, mm -hmm. you know, that's how I really like to share my love. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I agree with you. I mean, being able to take a moment for me, it's usually when I'm outside in the sunshine and like send out those healthy vibes and, you know, and I, uh, I feel the love, Mari, because it, this is only, I think, the second time we've been together. Or did we meet once before your show? Maybe it's our third time we together. We met once before the show. Yeah. And then the show ended. Briefly, yeah. and then we met. And then I was live on your radio show, which was, a, you know, oh, gosh, I hope I don't make a mistake, right? <laughs> or, or fall off my chair or, or, you know, knock over my camera or the dog comes running in and jumps on me. You know, all those th funny things things that could happen in a live. Uh, but of course, that just shows that I, I'm an animal lover. I do clumsy things and so forth. Yeah. I'm being authentic, right? Exactly. But um, even just this being our, our third time together, it is very evident that that's who you are. So that is why when I when I saw what it was, I was like, this is definitely your card. So um, thank you for everything you do um, from every cell in my body. I am delighted to be walking this earth with you and to now be your, uh, what, 20, 19, 20 minutes away now that I know uh, that we're both here in sunny Southern Orange County. And um, you're just, you know, you're an amazing, beautiful soul. And I'm so thankful to be able to call you friend and to be able to chat with you so openly and on camera about things that are so near and dear, I think, to both of our hearts in a way that we feel called to express in a in a bigger way oh you know what do you have a second to tell you how you started your radio show because that was something yeah. i i wanted to give a voice to that because i feel like it's important to uh to mention that so i'm gonna say i think you nodded your head yes right yes yes, yes absolutely Okay, so I'm just going to give a little background, half a second. I believe that in life, there are invitations for us. So far to date, I'm 54, and I believe there's two. But Mari, you can definitely tell me if there's like five more that I'm missing that I just haven't experienced or I overlooked. So when my husband was sick, that was an invitation of frightened and then, in parentheses, then enlightened. I had extremely frightening experience. Our children were super young. It was on the heels of bringing Sonia home from Guatemala. And there he was needing a kidney transplant, which then became kidney and liver. That was frightening, but I chose to find the enlightenment in that. The other invitation is intimidated and intrigued. And I believe that this story, Mari, is you accepting an invitation from God, the universe, creator, life, however people want to uh, see it. It's you. I'm guessing you felt a little intimidated and intrigued at the same time. So now I'll give you the mic. Absolutely. So I was talking with a girlfriend from New York who we were just bouncing around ideas about how to be more seen as a life coach. Um, this was back in 2013. And she said to me, maybe you should contact some local AM stations. Sometimes they're looking for content and uh, they might want to interview you. And so by this time in my life, I had learned not to jump on every suggestion somebody made. So I thought about it and it sounded like hmm, maybe something to think about, put it in the back of my head. The very next day I get a call and this lady says, I'm Megan Blair Davis from the amazing Women of Power radio station. And I'm calling to offer you your own show on my radio <laughs> station. <laughs> so after I fell off the chair, got myself back up. I mean, I was flabbergasted. My mouth must have been to the floor and I'm listening to her thing and I'm like, this is it. Crazy. Then I thought, well, this is a scam. So I'm checking out her website, looking at everything. I qualified it. I, I you know, I I emailed the other host. They all said she's amazing. Yes, it was scary. I had to take this little course about how to do radio show. 
Mm -hmm. Secret nobody knows. I always hated my voice. Since I was a kid, I always hated my voice. Hated it when I heard it back on the recording or something. And I thought, how am I going to do radio with with this voice that I have? But I said, Mm -hmm. you know what? This is an opportunity. This has fallen to my lap. And I said, how did you find me? She goes, oh, I have people who do that for me. They they look around for people who are interesting and we're looking for a relationship coach and they found you. And this is why I'm talking to you. I was like, unbelievable. So I did. And so now I've been doing Dare to Be Authentic radio for 10 years. It was 10 years to January 13th. And I, I can barely believe it. <laughs> yeah, and congratulations. And I I, I wanted to share that because... You you had told me that when we met one of the, I don't know if it was the first or the second time. And I loved it for so many reasons because, well, number one, I'm sad to hear that, you know, I think it's hard for all of us to hear our voice back personally. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think it, it sounds different than what we hear when we're speaking. Um, yeah. So I, I, I can understand, but I, I'd like to tell you, I enjoy listening to your voice. I could listen to you forever. Um, so, you know, I think there are other people who agree with me on that one. But I, 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 I like my book now. It's like I heard yes. it so much. I have to like it. <laughs> yes. So what a great transition, right? And transformation. And But the other thing I loved about that story is I believe we're all supposed to be seen in a way that's authentically ourselves. And... Uh, to be able to express ourselves, whether it's coming to you to ask, hey, can you help me publish a book? Um, or coming to you, can you coach me, Mari, because I'm, I want to find my voice in my marriage or in my future relationships right. or in my business, whatever that may be. And um, I believe the more of us that are willing to have that courage to dare to be authentic or, or exquisite and, and align in such a way that we can go out like your daughters and shine our lights, uh, I like to say, unapologetically for all to see, that then we're helping others in a different way, right? So when we were being the nice girl growing up, being you know, the line leader, the one who raised our hands, the one who followed, you know, we got, we were the first one to get quiet when the teacher asked us to be quiet and so forth. Sure. It, it, it was important and so forth, but there are ways that we can help people that are new, like having a radio show, like appearing the way your daughters do and inspiring others their age to be more authentic. Sure, at first, they might be looking at your girls going, how could they be that transparent? But part of them are probably thinking, how can I be that transparent, you know? And so um, I wanted you to share that. I'm glad I remembered. I didn't even see it on my note, but see, I'm visual. I saw it in my mind because that is a key thing I wanted you to be able to express because I am 110% behind you on that. And and yeah, it's intimidating and intriguing and right, you had to learn something new and you, yes. uh, and here you are. And, and you also found the balance of, hey, five days a week is not for me, right. um, but being able to get your voice out there, being able to, and heck, I am so grateful that you did the show because that's how I got to meet you. And being a podcaster for me was intimidating and intriguing. I said no multiple times, Maury, when I was on the East Coast. When I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, it was not several people, different people that I met that didn't know each other over the course of years said, you should have a a podcast. You should have I never listened to a podcast. Why should I have a podcast? I don't have time for a podcast. No. (laughs) And then I came to California. Here I am struggling with Hashimoto's disease, which is a thyroid problem that wasn't controlled yet. Um, Living in a pandemic, not knowing my neighbors and, you know, but I was outside meditating and praying uh, again in the sun. And, um, and I felt 
like I was getting a message and the message wasn't clear. I did not have Verizon, so I had a bad connection. No, I'm joking. But it was, it was, you know, okay, I kind of hear you. You want me to stretch myself, but I don't understand what you're asking me to do. And sure enough, within I, I just said, I can't get, I'm not getting this message. I know you're asking me to do something different. What is the different? Like, I don't know what the different is. It's not on my list of to do's. And sure enough, Carrie Ann Cartmer Edwards, uh, who's helped me with my branding and marketing and became a, a, a best friend. Uh, she's in the UK. She said to me one day, I'm working on, you know, the concept of doing a podcast. You should do a podcast. And I said to her, yeah, I should, you know, like, uh, I think maybe, yeah. Okay. Maybe, uh, but let me think, yeah, maybe, you know, and I hung up and I was like, I think I might be doing a podcast. Was that what I, you know, like when you look up and you're like, is it a podcast? Or what? <laughs> you know, and, and then here, and had it not been for that, me starting a podcast and then deciding, okay, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. Let me be a guest on someone else's show. I wouldn't have met you. And right. I wouldn't be here today with this conversation. And honestly, you fill me up getting to know you more. Having this time together is so joyful, so blissful, so fulfilling to me and um, and always enlightening. And so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for stepping into that space and uh, go give your girlfriend from New York a hug. Tell her another New Yorker <laughs> said thank you 10 years later. And, um, you know, it. It takes being courageous. It takes being bold. Sometimes I tell my husband, I'll speak to my own, not to you. It takes being a little bit crazy in a good way because we know we're here to shake things up. And so, um, you know, when I say crazy, I mean in, in a very loving way. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> but, you know, it's going outside of the norm, right? And sometimes somebody might say, you're you're crazy. And I say, I am crazy. You're right. Like, <laughs> well, I don't yeah, wear red sure. lipstick for nothing. I, I'm, I'm trying to show you I am a little different and I, I don't do things the normal way. Sometimes I do them the very hard, long way, but you know, eventually I get there. So thank you for having your show. Thank you for being my guest. Aww. Thank you for everything you do and shining unapologetically and and leading others to this place. And I will put all of your contact information below. And then I just wanted to ask, do you have any other uh, hints or advice or last thoughts, Ma Mari? I wanna thank you for having me on with you. This has been, oh my gosh, what a beautiful conversation. And and we're on camera on top of it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, no, I just think that everything you're doing is lovely. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. We are just truly soul sisters yes. and wishing you all the very best always. <laughs> thank you. In gratitude. So, uh, yes, uh, you're just delightful to know. And one of these days we're going to get together in person so I can yes. give you a big hug. <laughs> So thank you so much. Have a great one. Bye, Mari. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.